Well, it's so wonderful to just be filled, our hearts filled with gratitude, our hearts are filled with thanksgiving. We serve a good God. We serve a wonderful God. He is so good, so faithful. You know, you can really never go wrong with God. You really can't. When I see people that are missing out with the Lord, I know that it's not because it's on His part. There must be something wrong on their part. Because I've experienced, as time goes on, I'm experiencing it's getting sweeter. It's just getting sweeter. Every day gets sweeter than the day before. I don't know if that's what you're experiencing, but that's been my experience. Sweeter as the days go by, His love grows sweeter. Those aren't just words. Amen. That's, that's an experience. That is an experience. That's something that we have experienced in our hearts. His grace working in our hearts, changing us, transforming us to be more merciful, more like Him. I've entitled the message this evening, Joy Unspeakable and Full of glory full of glory some folks read this verse of scripture and they just read the scripture and they really don't altogether understand there is a reality to it there's an experience amen be not filled be not drunk with wine but be filled be filled with the spirit stay filled with the spirit Running over, full in running over. Amen. To the point where the Lord is your portion. He's your portion. This world is not your home. This world is not your portion. He is your portion. Amen. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Folks try to sing the song, but the experience far outweighs singing the song. When you sing that song with understanding, when you sing that song with experience, when you sing that song because you're experiencing it in your heart, it's real. And we see so many in this hour that have a form. They've got a form of our godliness. They have a form of what we experience. They have a form of it. But they deny the power. Amen? They de deny, deny the power of the Holy Ghost. Joy so good and so immeasurable and so wonderful that you can't even put it into words. Have you ever been so happy that you couldn't even put it into words? So happy, so thrilled, so excited that you couldn't even find the words to express how happy you was. I tell you folks, that's what Jesus has for us. Amen. Not only is the joy of the Lord our strength, but it's our portion. Remember, the kingdom of God does not come in observation. It's within us. And it, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It's peace, joy, and the Holy Ghost. If you are enjoying the 
presence of God to a measure where you're overflowing, then you're in the kingdom. Amen. We're living in a time where you find very few that are really enjoying their salvation. Amen? Really, really enjoying salvation. Salvation, for me, is not a drudgery. It's not a drudgery for me to serve Jesus. It's getting more exciting, more thrilling, more joyous. It just gets better every day. I mean, you say, well, so we have good days and bad days. That hasn't been my experience. I don't have good days and bad days. The closer I get to Jesus, the better it gets. I just have good days. Amen? It just gets better. Now, that doesn't mean that the enemy, that God won't allow the enemy to come by like he did to Job. But I trust that I have something a little more than Job had. Job didn't have what we have today. He didn't have access to what we have today. He didn't have understanding of what we have today. In fact, back then, Job didn't even know there was a devil. He just thought the bottom fell out. We know there's a devil. Amen. We know that God is not our enemy. We know that the Lord is for us. And if the Lord be for us, who can be against us? I mean, the Lord is raising up a people right now. Amen. He's raising up a people that are going to take the joy of the Lord to the streets. Going to take the joy of the Lord to the nations. Going to take this real joy, real fruit to the nations. Going to take this fruit out of the streets. Pluckable fruit. Where people can get a taste and see that the Lord is good. Trees of righteousness, planting of the Lord. Amen? Planted by the rivers of living water. Rooted and grounded in Christ. A living testimony. You go out there to the world and they can get a taste of the goodness of God. It's not only doable, folks. It's His promise. And God is not a liar. He promised. He promised. And what he has promised, he is well able to perform. See, we're his garden. And he has made a planting. He has done a planting. He has planted us in his garden. He's planted his own word. The seed, incorruptible seed, the word of God, the seed in our hearts. And that seed is being germinated. It is coming to fruition. It is developing. It is growing. To where the scripture says, the day star shall arise in our hearts. The day star is the sun. That's not talking about the S-U-N but the Son of Righteousness, to arise with healing in His rays. The day star from on high hath arised in our hearts. Amen. That's what I'm sharing with you, the joy unspeakable and full of glory. Full of glory. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 8. Actually, let's back up and go to verse 7 because it might even be better just to go ahead and read the whole thing. Let's just, let's step back and read. Let's read from verse 3. Now, I really feel like we should go ahead and read from verse 1. Let's understand who Peter's talking to. <coughs> Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, 
to the strangers scattered throughout Poinus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia. Elect. According to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Amen. He's not speaking to carnal people. Amen. He's speaking to God's elect. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit. He's talking to those that have been sanctified, set apart by the Spirit of God unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Grace be unto you. And peace be multiplied. <clears throat> Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy <clears throat> hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Reserved for who? For you who are kept by the power of God, ready to be revealed in the last time. Are you listening? Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein you greatly rejoice. Are you greatly rejoicing? Though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Notice he didn't say you have to go through manifold temptations. He said, if need be. Remember what Jesus said? He said, when you pray, pray that you not enter into temptation. Lead us not into temptation. Amen? Amen. When he was in the garden with his disciples, he, said, he told them, he says, watch and pray. And he told them what to pray. He said, pray that you not enter into temptation. If need be, you are in heaviness through manifold. I thank God that I'm not experiencing manifold temptations. Did you know you can get above the devil's wiles? You can get above the temptations of the devil. You can rise above these things and you can serve the God of heaven with victory. You don't have to be tempted of the devil. You say, well, wait a minute. Jesus was tempted at all points yet without sin. That's right. But he didn't stay there. He moved on. If we're still being tempted in the same areas we were tempted in yesterday and the day before, then we haven't overcome that area yet. It's time, brothers and sisters, that we start overcoming these tests. And on God's part, it's a test. On the devil's part, it's a temptation. God allows the devil to tempt us. But God uses it, amen, for good. He uses it for our good. Just like with Joseph. What the devil meant for evil, God meant for good. That the trial of your faith. Notice he talked about manifold temptations, and then right after that he talks about the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth. More precious than gold. On this earth, man says the most precious thing that is on the earth right now is gold. But this is more precious than gold. And he didn't say faith was more precious than gold. He said the trial of your faith, the testing of your faith is more precious than of gold. Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love. In whom, though now you see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, 
even the salvation of your souls. God gave me a revelation on this one day. Peter is writing this letter, his first epistle, and he's telling us something. He's sharing with us experiential knowledge. He's telling the people, don't look at the process. Remember, Peter denied the Lord. But remember, Jesus said to Peter, I've prayed for you that your faith doesn't fail. When you are converted, strengthen your brethren. And so Peter now has been converted. And he's saying these words in retrospect. He's saying, receiving the end of your faith. That word end means outcome. Paul, or Peter is saying, don't get caught up in the process. Receive in the outcome of your faith. God's not finished. God's not done with you. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. What he has begun, he is well able to finish in your life. He's able to perform. He's able to complete. Amen. We need to let him finish what he started. Let him let him. Yield to him. Let him. Amen. You are his building. As I was talking to a young minister today, we are the Lord's building. And when the scripture talks about a gap in the wall and making up the gap, we're talking about, the scripture is talking about a spiritual house, a spiritual uh, kingdom, a spiritual wall, a spiritual building. And how many know, just like the wall fell down in Jerusalem and there was, there was stones on the ground, spiritually speaking, truth has fallen in the streets. And the stones, the living stones are falling. That's why the scripture says, God has gave some for the edifying, the building up of the body of Christ. The building up of the body of Christ. We are living stones to be placed in the building. But there's also a wall round about that building. Just like in the Old Testament scriptures, the wall protected those that were in the kingdom. Those that were in Israel were protected from the enemy by the wall. And there was a watchman on the wall that would watch for the enemy. But God says there's a breach in the wall. And that wall, brothers and sisters, is not made of brick and mortar. It's the fire of truth. God's wall of fire. Amen? And Zechariah says that God would be a wall of fire round about Jerusalem. You know what happens when you're not walking in truth? That wall of fire is not round about you. That's where the church is today. There is a gap. There is a place where the enemy is getting in right now into the church because truth has fallen in the streets because folks are not uh, seeing the value of truth and I'll tell you this when you treat truth the way truth is being treated today how can you expect to be protected by God truth is being rejected because they would not receive the love of the truth, God would send them a strong delusion that they would believe a lie. What could be more of a strong delusion than believing you can sin and go to heaven? Can you think of a more stronger delusion than to make people believe that all you got to do is accept Jesus as your Savior, mouth a couple pious platitudes, and you're still going to heaven. That is a lie. It's not of God. It's of the devil. It's to keep you thinking that you can have the world and have God too, making you believe that you can live in sin and you can still go to heaven. My friend, sinners don't go to heaven. Sinners are going to go to that awful place called hell and they're going to spend the eternity in the lake of fire. Sinners don't go to heaven. You must repent of your sins. You must not continue to sin. Shall we continue in sin that grace should abound? 
God forbid, how can we that are dead to sin continue in sin? How can we continue to sin if we're dead to sin? So that tells me if we're continuing in sin, we're not dead. Our life is to be dead. We're supposed to be dead and our life is supposed to be Christ. Paul said, it's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth. It's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave himself for me, who loved me. Folks, it's his life in us. It's his life. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not life. But the wrath of God abides upon him. I'm telling you, God could use me right now in a coliseum or a stadium with millions of people, hundreds of thousands of people. I would not be excited if the people just rejoiced because of a feeling. But if some folks begin to get, begin to understand truth, if somebody in the congregation or someone in the crowd of people would begin to rejoice because that the truth was made known to them and they began to understand truth, then friends, that's something to rejoice about because that person can leave that place and be standing upon the rock of ages. We have a folks in this hour that are trying to live by a feeling, trying to live by emotion. Feelings and emotion will only take you so far. Amen. The storm, the storm is no respecter of persons. The same storm that came to the foolish man came to the wise man. It was the same storm. And the Lord told me several years ago, he spoke to me. I was in the spirit and the Lord spoke to me. He said, a storm is coming. Amen. I don't, I'm not a meteorologist. I, I'm not a, a weather man, but prophetically, I'm going to repeat the words that my Savior said over 2,000 years ago. Amen. The Bible says the Holy Ghost will bring back to your remembrance. He'll say those things that Jesus has already said. And that's what we're doing in this hour. We're oracles of God. And Jesus is still speaking. Still speaking in this hour. They're not our words. God is speaking. Amen. God is speaking. His voice, that trumpet, the trumpet, his voice is sounding. Amen. The trumpet is sounding. The alarm is sounding. There was two trumpets that came out of one piece of silver in the Old Testament. One was to gather the people. The other one was to warn. It was an alarm of war. Folks, there's two trumpets being sounded right now. It's the same trumpet. But who's going to prepare themselves for the battle if the trumpet gives an uncertain sound or not a distinct sound? There is that distinct sound. And I've noticed that when the real power, the real anointing is upon a minister and he's giving truth, there's a certain sound. And it has a, there's a, there's a joy. I mean, there is a joy unspeakable in that sound. There is a joy of victory in that sound. I mean, it causes your spirit to begin to soar. Amen. You begin to soar like an eagle, praise God. When you hear that sound, praise God, the sound is of a trumpet. Amen. Come up here, John. I want to show you some things, John. Come up here. And immediately he says he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He's speaking. I can hear his voice. He's speaking right now. Amen. Can we hear the trumpet sounding? Or are we going to be like the majority today that's waiting for the last trump, waiting for the last sound of that trumpet as it begins to go to a place where it doesn't make a sound anymore? See, the church is going to be raptured just at the end, just before the trumpet sounds no more. And then that wicked shall be revealed. But you don't have to wait. You don't have to wait for the Lord to descend with the voice of an archangel. You don't have to wait for the trump, to, the trump of God. You can wake up now. The trumpet, the alarm is going off. Wake up, amen? Wake up. Arise from your sleep. Arise and God shall give you light. Rise up now. Oh, I just recently had the Lord. I was on my way home in the vehicle and the Spirit of God gave me a word and He spoke to my spirit and He said, Arise and shine, for thy light has come and the glory of the Lord 
The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Amen. That's the same anointing that was on Jesus. Amen. There's a drawing. That anointing draws. That light draws. Amen. There's a drawing effect. And Jesus said, you couldn't come unless it was, unless it was given to you of the Father. You could not come unto me lest the Spirit drew you. And many of them left him at that point. And he turns to his own disciples. He says, will you also go away? That's where we are right now, folks. Amen. A lot of folks being drawn right now. Being dragged by the Spirit. Don't fight it. Don't resist the Holy Ghost. The Scripture talks to us in Genesis and says, God says, I won't always strive with man because he's also flesh. Amen. The Spirit of God was striving in the days of Noah. But he won't always strive. He's striving right now. Amen. Like the eagle, the mother eagle that flutters over her young, trying to flutter over the United States of America, saying, wake up, wake up, your enemy is coming in. Amen. There was a breach in the wall of our protection in this nation on 9-11. There was a breach in the wall. And God allowed the enemy to come in. Amen. Why is there a breach in the wall? Truth has fallen in the streets. But let me tell you, brothers and sisters, God is raising up an army. Amen. Raising up an army like Nehemiah. One hand, amen, with uh, working on that wall. Amen. But the other hand with a sword ready to fight. Praise God. We're living in troublesome times. You can't afford not to have your weapon, the Word of God. You can't afford to be ready to fight the enemy, to be, to be uh, st resisting the enemy while you're working on the wall. We're in a time when we need to be working on the wall and fighting at the same time. There are those that will come and say, let me help you. And we've got to have the same attitude, the same wisdom as Nehemiah. You have no lot in this matter. Know them that labor among you. The enemy's trying to get in. He'd like to give us some untempered mortar. Yes, he would. He'd like to come in and mix the mortar for us. What's the Bible say about that? We need to have mortar that's been tempered, ready, amen, so that when we do put the stones in place, that when the enemy comes, he won't be able to penetrate the wall. But if the enemy gets in and he gets and changes that mixture, brings in a, his own mixture and sets his own uh, li limits, his own measurements to the mixture of that, cement that mortar then he can slip in something that won't hold but I'm glad I know who Jesus is and I'm glad that there are ministers in this hour that will not will not use anything but pure truth they have a love for the truth they love the truth amen and they're not working alone they're working with the prophets, as we see, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. They did not build without the prophets. The prophets were working with Nehemiah. They were working with Ezra. Amen. This all works together. All things are working together. God has a people in the earth right now. They will not break rank. They will not thrust against one another. God is raising up an army, amen, that's going to restore the paths to dwell in, the paths to walk in. They shall be called ministers of the Lord, repairers of the breach, repairers of the breach, joy unspeakable and full of glory, repairers of the breach. Amen. 
You, you see these men working on the wall. You see these men building. You're going to see a smile on their face. You're going to see joy in their souls. Uh, you're going to see people that are happy. Amen. When they roll up their sleeves. Uh, amen. They're ready to work. Uh, they don't uh, count it uh, a drudgery. Amen. To roll up their sleeves. Uh, get their hands dirty. Whether it's building a building for orphans. Uh, whether it's uh, digging ditches. Uh, whether it's digging a well. Hallelujah to God. Uh, it's joy. Un unspeakable and full of glory hallelujah they're just like the scripture says drawing water out of the wells of salvation joy 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 you know when the wise man built his house he had to dig deep he dig deep why he had to find the rock why did he have to find the rock? Because if you're going to have a well, you got to have a rock. And in the Old Testament, where the, the, the rock Christ went, they had water. And you're going to have water flowing out of your belly in this hour. You better dig deep. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. It shall be as a well in you springing up springing up springing up but you got to dig deep you got to find the rock the rock is Christ out of that rock will flow rivers of living water hallelujah joy unspeakable and full of glory hallelujah praise God this he spake of the spirit hallelujah out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. But how many are digging deep? How many are building their house upon the rock? And how many are digging deep so they'll have a well? Amen. You need a well. You won't survive very long without water. You got to find, amen, that rock. You keep digging until you find the rock. There's a lot of folks in this hour. They've got a foundation. They've got Jesus. But they don't know that Jesus is the Son of God. They don't have a revelation that Jesus is the rock of ages. They don't have that foundation because they don't have that revelation. Amen. Jesus said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He's is building his church. He is building a church right now. Amen. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Amen. Praise God, the rock of ages. And out of their belly shall flow rivers, rivers, rivers of living water. Out of their innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. Friends, it's the joy of the Lord, it's your strength. And if you've got rivers of living water flowing out of you, you are strong in the Lord. You are powerful in the Lord. There's nobody that can get you down. There's no devil that can get you down. There's nobody that can discourage you. You're, you're in the power and the anointing of God. I don't see one place where Jesus got discouraged. Not one time. Not one time. He was beaten beyond the description. Never once did he lift up his voice. Nobody ever heard one sound from him. And this might bother you and this, this, this might even offend you. But do you know why the apostles returned rejoicing after they were beaten with rods? They were rejoicing because they never felt those rods. There is protection in the presence of God. I won't go any further than that because the things God has revealed to me, it will offend you. There's no question in my mind. Because there's something about flesh it likes to, I don't know, it just thinks it has to hurt. Well, I got to hurt. No, you don't have to hurt. God's desire is that you learn how to hurt for the lost. That you learn how to carry a burden for the lost and that you experience that suffering of your soul and the offering of your soul. But this outward man is not, God's not interested in that hurting. God's not interested in your outer man hurting. There's no profit in the flesh. No profit if, a, if the world beats on you and you hurt. That God doesn't get any glory out of that. They, they were singing the praises of God as they were born, being burned at the stake. 
How could you sing when you're feeling burned? The reason they were rejoicing and singing is because they didn't feel the flames. Amen. You say, well, do you have scripture to back that up? Sure do, absolutely. What about the Hebrew children that were in the fiery furnace? Nothing's recorded. They ever heard a scream. There was no screams. They didn't feel the flames. In fact, there was no even smoke, not even the smell of smoke on them. And I read in the scripture about an army God's raising up in the book of Joel. And the, it says when they're thrust through with a sword, it said they shall not be thrust through. Amen. They shall not be wounded. Hallelujah. There is a place in God, total, complete protection, where man cannot harm you, where man cannot harm, hurt you. Jesus said, not one of the hairs of your head will fall to the ground. That's how much he loves us. Now, if I was to go a little bit further, you probably would be offended, but I think I'm going to. See how much time I've got left. I've got 10 minutes. I'm going to go a little further. You might think that Jesus, uh, being whipped 39 times and being beaten, the, the th crown of th uh, thorns being crushed in his skull, uh, all that he endured, the nails in his hands, you might think that he felt those things. But you need to understand there is no prophet of the flesh. His soul was made an offering. It pleased the father to bruise his son, not the outward man, Thou shalt bruise his heel. Thou shalt crush his head. Jesus crushed all principalities. He crushed the works of the devil. For this reason, the Son of Man was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. It was not a flesh and blood thing on the cross. It was nothing to do with flesh. And when he took the 39 stripes, he didn't do that so that he could hurt. He didn't do that so he could uh, hurt. It wasn't the hurting that saves us. It wasn't the feeling of hurt that saves us and heals us. It's the truth. It's the blood of Jesus that was shed. It was his blood. Amen? It was the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's not you, see, you think that when you're hurting in the flesh, you think somehow you're gaining. You think, well, if I'm hurting in the flesh, God must be pleased with me. Wouldn't it be more rejoicing to be beaten with rods and not feel those rods? Wouldn't that be more exciting than be beaten with rods and feel those awful rods hitting your body? Feel that sting and, and then, you know, return rejoicing because... I understand that you are uh, accounted worthy to suffer for him, but there's something greater. And there's a place where we can get to where you don't feel anything in the flesh. You may not believe that, but it is true. He said to him that was, uh, there's three things, sanctified, he also glorified. Glorified bodies. Do you think a glorified body feels a rod? Do you think a glorified body uh, can have a sword thrust through it? Do you think a glorified body can be uh, harmed in the physical? Do you think anything in this world has power over that glorified body? It doesn't. Jesus walked right into the midst of them, right through the wall. He, he, he just walked right through. And, you know, believe it or not, there's a general, one of the highest generals in the military of the United States of America that right now is trying, is, they're trying to learn how to walk through walls with the help of the devil, with the help of the spiritual world. Well, I'm glad I have the real. I'm glad I have the genuine. 
I'm glad I don't have to have an out-of-body experience, but that I can receive a glorified body in my body. Amen? I can walk through a wall. In my body, praise God, be transported like Philip. Praise the Lord. Now these things might offend you, and when Jesus said to those around him, when he said, lest you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no life in you, he says, does this offend you? So there are things that will offend your flesh. And it's the truth that offends the flesh. Now, I didn't say these things to offend you, but they need to be said. They need to be said. Truth needs to be given. Because there might be somebody out there that will get a hold of the truth and benefit from it. And that's always been my hope. Broadcasting on the internet, you never know you never know if there's just one person out there. Amen? Like a Nathaniel. Amen? Amen? Underneath a fig tree. You never know. You never know if there's someone out on a boat. Amen? That while Peter's being called, while John's being called, while Andrew's being called, you never know if someone else might, a seed might get in. You don't know. You don't know. The word of God, amen, it grew and multiplied. I'm not going to limit his word. His word is powerful. Amen. I'm not going to limit where his word goes or what it does or what it can do. I'm just going to be faithful and let the Lord do the rest. I'm going to be faithful. Amen. I'm going to be faithful. Praise the Lord as an oracle of God. Praise the Lord. But I'll tell you this right now, folks. I am going to rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory for that which shall be revealed in the last time. Hallelujah. The manifestation, the unveiling of the sons of God. Right now, all creation is groaning for the manifest unveiling of the sons. For the unveiling of Jesus' brothers. Oh yeah. Even as David. Made his brothers. Through the power of God. Through the word of God. Through the spirit of God. Even as David made mighty men. So the Lord. Is raising up some mighty men right now. And just like David had some mighty men. That could stand all by themselves. And protect, amen, a patch against a whole army. One man, amen, one man stood against a whole army. We see one man with a jawbone of an ass slewing a whole army. That is the power of God. Amen? You see pictures of Samson. All drawn up today, making him look like these, like Hercules, like he's this big. Samson was just a man. But when the Spirit of God would come upon him, he became another man. Amen. Hallelujah. Just another man like you and I. But when the Spirit of God was upon him, he grabbed a hold of the gates of the city. Amen. And he carried them. To begin deliverance. That's He started something. He began something. Samson only began. Could you imagine what Samson could have done. If he didn't have his eyes taken out. If Samson didn't uh, disobey God. If he didn't reveal the secret that God told him never. See Jesus said don't cast your pearls before swine. There are things God will reveal to us. He says don't share it with anybody. Amen. He told Paul, don't, don't go to the Jews, Paul. They're the same person that his hands are being bound is the same person that's going to be imprisoned. This is going to happen to you, Paul. Why? Because he kept going to the Jews when God called him to the Gentiles. Remember, Paul only had the earnest of the Spirit. 
But God's raising up a 100% obedient army right now that will not break rank. They know their place. They know their position. And they will not disobey the Lord. They follow orders perfectly. Perfect soldiers. That's because they've been brought to complete 100% death of the self-life. No confidence in the flesh. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Overcomers. By the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and love not their lives unto the death.